Hi, I'm Tomi Ariemi, and I am the author of Children of Blood and Bone and Children of Virtue and Vengeance. Yes! Yeah, let me hear it. Let me hear it. I was gonna say I dreamt about magic, but I still dream about magic. I've always used writing to give myself what I couldn't get in real life. I think Children of Blood and Bone is very much the adventure I want to have. True art isn't an escape from life, it's just a different way to engage with it. So when I'm portraying life, I want to portray the most beautiful parts of it, the love we feel for each other and the connections we have and the actual magic that is just being alive and existing. But life isn't about avoiding the pain. Life literally is the pain. So it's very important for me to portray that your pain doesn't have to break you. It can be what builds you or what gives all the beautiful moments in your life purpose. Pain is what connects us because we all feel it. I had internalized that I couldn't be in my own imagination. The boundlessness and the magic I try and keep is to keep little Tomies from ever doing that. I describe blackness in the book so vividly it is because I know if you don't see it, then it erases from your imagination. But then if you do see it, you know, like we're sitting here in Paris and I look like this. And it's because what, four or five years ago, I saw my first magical picture of a black person, like one picture and all of this. And so I don't take it lightly. If like, if one picture could do that for me, imagine what 500 pages, 600 pages, imagine what one film, imagine what seven films. Like I used to think, oh, it's just art. And then I'm like, no, art is actually how you affect life. To me, it's how I fight back against all that stuff. That intensity and that pursuit of excellence and perfection, Nigerian excellence, that is a big part of my success and my work ethic and my drive. But if you live in America, they teach you to dream. Immigrant parents are like, we didn't come here for you to dream, but you can't help it because you feel that is the American dream. You're sold this myth. Magic plays such a big part in the black experience because we're very spiritual across African cultures. There is magic and power from feeling so connected to everyone who came before you. It makes you feel safe in a world where you can't feel safe at all. But to me, that's where the magic is. You feel like you're connected in this great fabric of time. And it's a really, it's, it's crazy and it's surreal, but it's also strangely comforting. The role new or different mythologies play in our future narratives, I don't think of it so much as they're new. I think it's about taking what mainstream society hasn't shown a spotlight on and saying, like, look at this, and look at this sacred blackness. I did not ever think that there were black gods and goddesses or, like, black spirits or saints or anything like that because I never saw them. And I see a postcard of the Orisha and I see like Yomoja like commanding the sea. I see like Shango breathing fire. And I was like, it literally lit my imagination on fire. You know what I'm talking about. When I think about building like strong black characters, I also think about how do you build like strong female characters? Every female figure in my life is very powerful, whether it's they're powerful in the way they love or in the way they provide for their family, in the way they nurture, I feel like that strength and that power is also embedded in the black identity because as a people, we've gone through so much then learning to have the kind of imagination that can make a world full of these powerful black characters. I had to fight in myself to get to that. I'm so much stronger for it. That's where these characters come from. Having that faith in yourself, giving yourself permission. You know how you think, you know your vision, and you know what you want. And so it's not about being delicate about that, it's about almost being ruthless and protecting that to make sure what comes out is as close to what you have in your head and your heart. What magical realism and fantasy means to me, it's a tool 
to change all the things I wish I could change in this world. My ability to make you see me the way I want to be seen and not the way the world has told me I should be seen is magic. It is so important to depict blackness as magical because it's depicted as everything but magical. It's not only important, but I think it's, it's essential to be glammed up like this. Like it's important to have that imaging because that, that changes. Where humans are so simple. We're complex, but psychologically, we're, if you see it, you believe it. If you don't see it, you don't believe it. So I think it's my job to make it seen. You know what I mean? Good conversation. Let, let's go. Let's get out of here.